We art lovers may have discerning tastes, but even the most cultured curators among us can't help but make this face Aww. when we see this face. The fancy science term for this is baby schema. We're hardwired to find small creatures with big heads and big eyes adorable because human babies are so useless, it's imperative that we find them cute so that we remember to feed them. Aww. But what is it about this that does something to our brain? According to psychology, when it comes to miniatures, the devil is literally in the detail. Teeny tiny hot dog with mustard. Our brains are drawn to the part of a scene that contains the most information. And that's exactly what a miniature is. A vessel for a frankly ridiculous volume of fiddly condensed info. Mmm, info. So it's no surprise that humans have been fascinated by miniatures forever. And while Egyptians were making miniatures 5,000 years ago, right now, they're really having a moment. From best-selling novels, to the European Fine Art Fair, where the most talked about sale was a Dutch doll's house that contained 200 17th century silver ornaments. It had an asking price of 1.75 million pounds. The world of miniatures is as big as these guys are small. Teeny tiny. And Australia is no exception. We even have an officially incorporated miniatures association dedicated to celebrating tiny little things. They have a convention and everything. Miniatures are everywhere. You might have been subjected to a school trip to Cockington Green Gardens in our nation's capital. And who can forget about the recent supermarket minis craze? We were literally obsessed fighting each other over mini groceries and spending ridiculous amounts to complete our collections. Miniaturite. Yes, mini capitalism. Oh my God, it sounds so tiny. Mm -mm -mm -mm. As well as tickling our weird desire for lots of info in a tiny space, miniatures are just damn impressive. Check this out. Looks like a blurry picture of the Mona Lisa, right? Right. What if I told you it was the width of one third of a human hair? I think I've lost it. And when a mini portrait of King George IV sells for almost half a million pounds at Christie's, it's worth asking ourselves, what is it about our times that makes us so obsessed with tiny things? And you cut the teeny tiny yarn with teeny tiny scissors. <laughs> well, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone that doesn't feel like the world is just a bunch of random chaos at the moment. I think we're all familiar with the feeling of having little to no control and miniatures, it turns out, actually provides a calming antidote to that feeling. Levi Strauss, the philosopher, not the genes, believes that we get satisfaction from minis because we can see and comprehend them in their entirety. They're not threatening. While the world around us rages, we can hold a whole world in our hands. Yay. That feels better. I'm not a control freak.